Joining us to talk more about the rate moves around the world and the impact on stocks, John Bilton is here. He's the head of global multi-asset strategy at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. I don't know if you had a chance to hear Barry Sternlich's comments in the last half hour. He thinks uh, just got to stop. <laughs> what do you think? I heard that. Um, well, look, I mean, I think the central banks are in a tough place. I mean, there's no doubt that inflation remains high. They were somewhat slow to come through. And I think you're now starting to see a bit of differentiation across central banks. I think what the Fed have done actually is, is fairly sensible, and they're using a lot of language to talk the market out of expecting a very quick series of rate cuts right. after they've reached their What do you rate. think Bostic was saying yesterday? I think he's basically introducing the idea that there's two-way risk today in markets. You know, we have got relatively high inflation. There is quite a hot economy. But at the same time, if you look at the amount of hikes that have come through already, they've yet to fully hit the economy. But was he being hawkish or was he being dovish? I think he was being pragmatic. And I think that's a, a bank like the Fed have got the opportunity right. to do that. And I think the slowing of pace, you know, a little bit more language, a little bit less action is actually giving the opportunity for them to manage. So what's your, gamble through, what's your gamble through Christmas and what's your gamble come 2024? Well, we think that the Fed are going to be up to around five and a half or so by Christmas. We think they're going to hold pretty steadily through much of 2024. We think that there's, you know, a elevated but not outsized risk of recession. We think that the economy remains fairly strong, an inventory cycle to come. And so we've got a reasonable amount of support. That probably leaves the Fed on hold for quite some time. Think about the 1990s, the middle 90s. They raised rapidly through 94 and then right. sat on it for a prolonged period. Multi-asset, multi-asset strategy. You invest in a lot of different assets? We do. We you do. Like we bonds? have a wide opportunity set. Yeah, we have bonds, we have stocks, we have Would credit. you buy bonds now? If, if we, we do buy bonds now. We think that you've got a decent amount of um, coupon return from bonds. Yes, we have to think about carry versus cash. But if you think about the spread of outcomes, in a base case, bonds are going to give you some Corporates? ballast in the portfolio. Corporates are giving you a decent pickup in carry. Yeah. And if you look at what's happening in the corporate space, earnings have held in better than expected. So, Can you give 4% on tax freeze right now? I think it's closer to 3, isn't it? They, that's been offered to me. And I, I, 4 would be pretty good. Can you get, can you get 4? Well, we're, ta we're taking mostly within the um, Treasury, the corporate space. In you terms don't do of Not so much in terms of our own portfolios. But um, yeah, in terms of the, what bonds are offering you, there's a lot of ballast in portfolios. Downside protection were the worst to happen. And also, if you've got duration in a portfolio in a multi-asset sense, you've got more opportunity to lean into risk on the other side. Credit spreads, currencies like the euro, stocks selectively where one feels that the earnings cycle is beginning to look a little bit more positive. It allows you optionality right. in the portfolio. Where, where are you on the equity side? You said selectively. What does that mean? So, who, you know, who are you thinking about? Can you name some names? Well, we don't really go down to the single stock level, okay. as, you, as you know, but yep. certainly, when it comes to, certainly when, it, when it comes to regions, the interesting thing is we're looking outside of the US. I mean, earnings cycle in terms of downgrades is probably towards the end of its cycle here in the US. But if we look at places like Japan, and bizarrely enough, despite today's news, the UK, you can actually start to pick up some inexpensive, you know, healthy dividend streams, some strong structural re-rating in the case of Japan. So I think there's a lot to do in the equity complex if you look beyond the S&P 500. Do you have a Bitcoin take? We don't really think about Bitcoin in a multi-asset portfolio since it's so volatile. You know, just a tiny amount of Bitcoin and it will blow out your tracking error budget. So we tend to stick to those financial assets where we know how they ought to behave in a portfolio. Like Netflix. We had the argument about Comcast and then I was thinking about Comcast was, uh-oh, we'll say it. Comcast was 62 and it went to 27. Yep. It's almost the same move that we're talking about with, with I mean, stocks are volatile. Stocks mm -hmm. on a two-year, even on a one-year basis, they either double, they get cut in half, they get cut in third, they triple. I mean, it's, they're volatile. And, and, and you're, it may not be great or full theory, but it's what someone's willing to pay on any given day for... for Absolutely, that's what valuations are all about. But at the same time, if you look at where the VIX is today, it's telling you they are nothing like as volatile as some of these you know, other sort of new generation assets that you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. So when we look at um, our portfolios, what we're looking to do is actually be able to take some level of predictability about where we think volatility is. And with stocks at the moment, that relatively low level of vol, yeah. that decline in volatility we're seeing that uh, we expect in, uh, in rate space actually allows us to build a much more balanced portfolio than we've been able right. to do during 2022. Yeah, so you like rates being a little bit higher. It gives you more optionality. It gives you more optionality. Yeah.